All right, I got the cast iron drain out all the way down from the attic. It's out with no damage to the plaster and lathe wall behind. That was really tricky. Here are two chunks I've yet to carry out to the street, well, to the refuse pile. I'll be taking a load to the dump. This, that sounds gross in this context. I'll be putting all this material in the back of a truck and taking it to the city dump later. But uh, the uh, old waste pipe, the cast iron stuff was kind of rotten on the bottom and uh, was not at the right angle, so it was holding a lot of stuff. So, um, anyway, it's a good thing we don't have smell of vision for these videos. I found that for some of the stuff, I was able to use a big chain cutter that I rented from the hardware store. That was useful on the four inch pipe in some sections. You can see they don't fall. You can see there, there's one where I was able to get a clean break with the chain. In some places, I couldn't get the chain around the four inch pipe or uh, the pipe was compressing too much. So I just hit it with a freaking hammer till it shattered. That also worked and was very satisfying. On the two inch pipe, I don't have any here to show you, but there was two inch pipe going up here. Uh, when I tried to use the chain cutter on that, it just compressed and bent in on itself. So I had to go uh, get a Sawzall blade, a Diablo, what is it called? Ultra Mega Steel. I don't remember what it was called. Anyway, they got a carbide blade that will says it'll cut cast iron. And in fact, it does. And it cut the two inch pretty easily. In fact, I had to use it in one area over here on the uh, four inch because I couldn't get the chain cutter behind it because of the space. And I certainly didn't want to take a hammer to it with the uh, old plaster wall behind it. So what I did was I cut about three quarters of the way around the circumference with the uh, Sawzall blade. And then I was able to uh, get a uh, pry bar hammered into there and just kind of flex it. Because once you have a uh, one point where there's a weakness in cast iron, you can kind of, kind of stress fracture it. So that's what I did. And I was taking them out in... Uh, on the four inch stuff, the big stuff, four to six foot sections, which only weighed a few hundred pounds. I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, that's right there. That one on the left is probably about 80 pounds. Uh, the four to six foot sections were between, uh, between 80 and 150 pounds, I'd, I'd estimate, based on carrying amps a lot. And a big section from down there all the way up into the attic of that two inch had to come down as one. And that was... Oh, a good 150 pounds, but about 10 plus feet long. So that was a little bit hard to, to uh, steer as I needed it. Anyway, I'm going to put on some ratty clothes and carry these two nasty things out to the street. And I've got a game plan already for putting in new PVC. Here's the old center line for the sink and the old drain. And uh, I'm going to move the new center line over here. To this mark because here's the right point of this sink and here's the left point and just go on this side of the stud that will give me more space between the sink and the toilet make this whole space feel more spacious i'd hope to put the toilet over there but that would have had some drain considerations and would have been a big problem so i'm gonna put the sink drain drain here and i'm gonna do a, a 45 degree vent connection which counts to code as a vertical run. So I don't have to worry about coming up uh, to 42 uh, inches or 47 inches, whatever it is, because that would put me right up against this board. And it's just really difficult to come up that much before I do a horizontal run. But I can do a diagonal run and bypass a lot of those issues. But to get the medicine cabinet to fit, I'm going to have to get some screws and... What's the word? Is it toe screw? <laughs> Where you t use screws to toenail here and here and then cut out here with the sawzall and then rip this down in situ because this board is not structural. The only thing it's doing is uh, some of these plaster 
uh, lathes are nailed to it. So I need to just leave about two inches of that, and that'll give me the depth to put in a medicine cabinet where I want it over here. And I can add another piece here to frame that out. Let me back up so you get a better view of what I'm talking about. I've determined that the only reason they had that big uh, two-by-two two furring going across the entire thing was to get around the circumference of the old cast iron drain. And since I'm replacing that four-inch uh, pipe, which had huge protuberances where its joints and couplers were with some uh, two-inch PVC for the new vent, uh, I won't need those. So I'll buy up almost two inches of wall space in this dimension. And similarly, they have furring here and on the other wall because the old plaster came out so much uh, and they had the old uh, door jams that came out so much. I'm going to be making new door jams so I can rehang the old high-quality solid door, but uh, that'll give me the flexibility to only come out a half inch for drywall. So I won't actually need to have all this furring. So this room will actually be an inch or two wider in every dimension when I'm done. But that's for later. First, I've got to get the new drains and supplies laid out. And then it's joist sistering and replacement time and bracing and all that fun stuff for the structural stuff. So I can put in a new floor so I don't have to do this all the time. But uh, I also got to deal with HVAC considerations. There's the old nasty vent. And I've been researching it. And Tom Silva says I should put one over on the exterior wall centered underneath the window. Who am I to argue with Tom Silva? It'll go right there. Anyway, whew, a lot of work done. A lot of work left to do. It's kind of interesting. It's a new set of problems to be solved. But it's kind of the same same uh, gray cells at, at work as with the amp gig. Thanks for watching.